Oh, you'll get. Great. So, hello, I'm Nalini McNabb, and it is my privilege this time to introduce our Wise Women's Roundtable Gathering with three of my dear Wise Women friends. And this focus for today is on the upcoming Equinox portal, the opening cosmically that's happening in our celestial realms and also within us. And what I've been seeing about this, and anyone seeing right now is about as good as the moment we're in because everything is shifting and changing so quickly. But what I've been feeling about this and the currents that Source was moving through me this morning as I sat with this had to do with some interesting things that are disparate, perhaps, but are cohesing in our awarenesses. Now, we're all aware that egos can learn to cooperate, whether they do or not. Hearts collaborate. And this is a given. And one of the things that I love about our wise women's roundtable here is that our hearts are already on a collaborative circuit. And what a source has been showing me lately is how that is expanding as we are each stars, or we are each like the snowflakes that are rampantly flying around outside my window right now. And we're each unique and precious and crystalline beings. And as we network, as we come together heart to heart, not so much on an individual basis, but on an individuated aspect of light basis, we increase the light quotient that circles Gaia's surface environment. You know, she has a stellar heart. The galactic center, which Kaylin's expertise will enlighten us upon later, um, is, is very present at the moment. So we have a pipeline or an opening, so to speak, within this alignment, to become more, to become more of what we are, what source offers through each of us. And that's anyone, whether you consider yourself wise or silly or awake or very unconscious or whatever a given day offers you in your awareness, you are unique and precious. We all are like these snowflakes. I was watching them this morning. It's been snowing since the wee hours. And as is odd and usual in the mountains where I live, sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't, kind of like consciousness. <laughs> and the flakes are these beautiful, fat, fluffy, feathery flakes of flow. And when I think about it, they're ice crystals. When I experience it, this is water and air and the cycles of Gaia moving together to create this wondrous display. We couldn't do that. And yet, our cells you know, the physiology within us does exactly that. You know, within each of our cells are these quantum components that make up the elements of nature, that make up the elements of Gaia, that make up our bodies, and they are all connected. They are all connected in a way that we often choose to ignore, avoid completely, forget about, don't pay attention to. And the time that we're in right now, the opening that the equinox represents, which I'm already feeling, I'm sure some of you are as well, is about bringing into a collaborative cohesiveness more of the frequencies that truly resonate, that truly sing as what we are in a balanced, gentle harmony. And Source is orchestrating this. It's not anything any one of us could do. It's not so much looking at this alignment and saying, ooh, what's happening? What's going to happen? I can be more tired of that. It's more, what are we becoming? You know, what have we been? What are we now? And this is an opportunity to drop all of those fake IDs. That's what they are, just like a teenager grabs a fake ID to go get something they want, whatever, into a place or a substance or something. We have all put on roles and personas and masks to play certain games. And it's not that they're valid or invalid, or we are, it's that these are fake IDs. And unlike the snowflakes and the stars and the leaves and the flower petals and you know the molecules of the earth, the sand, the crystals, they're not real. Those things are real. And our cells are real. And the essence that we are is real. And we have 
maybe forgotten or never been taught in this life how to recognize that, to recognize the synchronicities, the magic that's in each moment, the magic that is within nature. And how do we ground in a moment as big as this, in an opening as big as this? Well, we spiral inward. It's the vernal equinox in the Northern Hemisphere, the autumnal in the South. So the trees are doing their internal dance. You know, trees don't dance outwardly unless you're in certain parts of the world when you can see them, but they do this internal dance of, you know, is it time to draw inward? Is it time to send life force out to the twigs and the leaves and etc.? We're in an inward spiral, spiral sort of regardless of hemisphere. And it's into this truth that we all are, that we all hold that crystalline particle like the snowflakes, like the stars that is the truth of what source emanates through us and it's this incredible opportunity to open up to become that and get with the program just this is the cycle that we're all in galactically through nature at the cellular level at the cosmic level and the way to open to that is to do just that from the heart and to become it. The way to move through a portal is to become its alignment, to become its energies. It's not like, oh, here's the opening and I'm gonna plow through it. Good luck, <laughs> you know, that's not gonna work. But becoming its alignment and seeing how does that shift us? How does that change us? How are we changing along with this ride? You know, that's the real, the real magic of this time. So um, I was recently read one of Sarah Estelle's emails and in it, she reported that a student of hers had said, you know, when is all this going to end? Cause you know, it's a turbulent time. And what source brought through her and pardon me if I must quote you was it will end when we change. And the whole energy of this time is things, circumstances will change when we do, as we do. And that's not any kind of rule or role or, or path or dogma. It's how are we shifting and changing at the particle level? So with that, I would like to introduce my friend, Sarah Estelle. She can further enlighten us about how nature is bringing this through. Thank you, Nalini. Yeah, thank you for reminding me of that, of the truth. You know, it, it is such a truth. This is, this is in our hands, in our hearts, to change right now. And um, <clears throat> so, yeah. So I'm not quite sure what's coming through me. I have an idea, but I do know that daffodil is here. It sounds a bit crazy, but it's not in my world. So um, I just invite everybody just to bring a daffodil to mind doesn't matter quite what kind it is but we all know what a daffodil looks like she's very grounded um, in herself you know there's a lot of there's a lot of energy in her root and then she has this big stem that comes up with a big trumpet so a daffodil in the essence world is a, is um an ally that we would turn to and by the way we don't actually need the physical essences to do that I mean it's nice to have bottles that can help you but you can just call on daffodil to to help you here she, she's very happy to do that is is really like grounded communication so maybe she's just here to help me say what I what needs to come through me today I don't know well I'll just kind of throw that one into the uh the collective field here. What I would really like to share with you is, is kind of coming back to what Nalini was saying, talking about the cycles and the movements. Um, February was a crazy ride for me, as I'm sure it was for many people. I had a couple of weeks of not feeling very well. And but it wasn't really about that. That's just kind of nonsense, really, all of that. <laughs> um, it was a time that I just stepped back and rested. But because I had the time to feel and the time to notice, when I kind of came back to the surface and re-engaged with life and looked outside, I was just like, whoa. I, I felt in myself a deep disappointment with what I could see and feel. 
And so I just kind of noticed that and we had nice weather here and I went outside and I live near the, the Gironde estuary in southwest France. And one of the things we're graced with twice a year are the cranes that fly over. So they go north at this time of year and they go south. So when they go north, it's a big celebration because it means literally that the winter is over because the cranes know an awful lot more about this than we do. So everybody's like, yay, the cranes. So, and they, they fly in these beautiful V shapes and they change, one is a leader and then it changes and they do extraordinary things and of course, in autumn time when we could see them go the other way <laughs> well I do and anyway, I'm like oh no here we go but really what I it brought such hope to my heart because I saw that despite the craziness that us as humans are we're percolating this on our planet there was something far bigger than me far greater than me that was holding the rhythms of the earth and these amazing big birds, um, I guess, because where I live, I've seen lots of videos on good old Facebook of these cranes and they're big birds, you know, they come up, you know, I'm, it doesn't really matter how tall we are, but they're big, big birds. And they, every single year, they propel themselves into the air at a certain time and they go where they need to go. And so up from the sky, I then looked down to the ground and I saw the crocuses, I saw the snowdrops. Right now we have daffodils. I saw the trees changing as Nalini was talking about. And it shifted me from a place of kind of despair. And that's kind of a big word, but there was a part of me that was in despair to thank goodness, a bigger part of our earth knows how to do this. And I was able to lean into that faith and lean into that certainty that no matter what happened, our beautiful earth, if we lean into her, and if we follow her cycles here on this earth and just watch how she does it, then all is well, because it's, it's as we know, it's a cycle, it's a, a movement, it's a rhythm that's gonna go on far longer than us. And it will carry on moving and being a rhythm, no matter what happens. You know, the cranes will always fly over and the crocuses will always come up. Yay, that was Daffodil speaking there. <laughs> so, Kaylin, I hand over to you. We're doing the earth sky baton again, so. <laughs> I love that. I, just a couple of things. One is that there's a, um, a goose story that I came across that's similar to what the cranes, they fly in that V formation. Somebody leads for a while, then they drop back and they're able to fly 70% further because of the way they do it in that formation and they support each other. And it's like that collective, like we're going to do this together and we're going to accomplish so much more together. So, which is kind of also what Nalini was talking about, the collaboration right? and how they do that. So I just love that piece and that we're do, what we're doing here is we have a different person taking the lead each time. So we're, we're, we're being cranes and, and maybe geese. <laughs> anyway, that's what comes to mind. <laughs> like how cool is that, that we're doing that? It's just, it's just amazing. Um, and we weren't really thinking that, but just to have that kind of connection. So Yes, March equinox is a spectacular time. And any equinox, I mean, you know, in the Northern hemisphere, as Nalini was saying, we're at the spring and in the Southern hemisphere, it's in their autumn. Um, but at the equinox, the sun is rising exactly due east and due west, uh, setting due, due west. So it rises due east and sets due west, tracks across the sky and that due east to west, um, pattern. Now, when you're closer to a solstice, it might be more north, it might be more south, depending on the solstice. Um, and years ago, I had the opportunity of coming across something in the golden dawn, and they thought saw the equinox as super important because when the sun is over the earth like that on the on the kind of like on the equator, east and west, it lowers the magnetic field of the earth so that we have more access 
to our knowing to other realms and dimensions to and they did big ceremony around that to really cultivate that and so on and uh, I feel like that's definitely the opportunity that we have right now and <clears throat> the other thing is that uh, there I forget the I, I, I you'll be able to get the video that talks all about this and gives you all the details I'm just kind of kind of give you a brief sense of it right now but in the month of March Galactic center is directly overhead uh, in the early morning hours. So depending on what, you know, it's like the 1st of March, it might be 7.30 a.m. Your, your time. Of course, declination where you are on the planet will make a difference and that sort of thing. But there were some researchers who were noticing that people's psychic abilities were through the roof when galactic center was overhead. And it'll be overhead at different um, times at, all, all throughout the year, right? So they just noticed that there's this window of when galactic centers overhead, people's psychic abilities were enhanced. So if we think about when we're waking up in the morning, um, we can tap into everybody's psychic. Some people just, we just haven't practiced it or known it, or <laughs> some people are just more naturally that way because they haven't had it like maybe drummed out of them or something. But <laughs> um, my uh, my middle son um, is taking a psychic class right now, and they keep emphasizing that like everybody's psychic. <laughs> we just need to cultivate that ability. So here's a great month to do that, and especially at the equinox when we have galactic center overhead beaming down right onto us, whatever's coming from the center of our galaxy, that great galactic womb. Uh, and the equinox will be exact on March 20th. I think at 8.33 a.m. for um, Pacific time. So 11.33 a.m. for Eastern time, you can adjust for your time zone. Um, and as, whether you are at the exact moment, go out and watch the sun rise or watch the sun set and you will be connecting to that energy. Literally, there were cultures all over the planet that built um, sites that were illuminating certain petroglyphs or uh, illuminating a certain pathway that they had created or uh, illuminating certain stones that they had erected or, you know, lots of different ways that they were connecting with that, creating windows of light um, in some way. And that was how important it was to ancient cultures, something that we have tended to lose over the, you know, centuries that have come before us <laughs> and it's time to get that back and so even if all you do is go out and be with the sun as it's rising or setting or both ideal would be ideal uh see it at midday when it's direct you know pretty much overhead that is an amazing um way to tune into this energy so uh the other thing that's amazing about march equinox and it tends to be more the March equinox than the September equinox is something called equinox cracks in the magnetic field of the earth. It's called the, I just have, I'm gonna get the right name, Russell McFerrin effect. And uh, they started noticing and they were tracking it and it can happen anytime, but it tends to happen more in March around the equinox. And then that activates the Arctic lights and that brings in more light and energy and so on. So the equinox portal, not only do we have the sun helping to lower the magnetic field of the earth so we can have more access to things, not only do we have galactic center overhead beaming directly down to us and increasing our psychic ability, we also have these um, equinox cracks in the magnetic field of the earth that brings in more light energy for us to connect with. And literally they said sometimes it could be as big as the state of California, the, the, the crack in the field or bigger than our planet. Like, whoa, it's so, and it just depends, but it's more likely to happen now than any other time. So we want to, and also if we think about equinox, it's equal balance of day and night. So there's the same amount of light as, this, as dark, that balance point. So how are we coming into balance within ourselves and, uh, and, and, and claiming that and activating that in a more powerful way? Uh, so one more thing, the, this equinox, we have Jupiter and Mercury conjunct in Pisces. And what that means is that there's an expansion in our ability to 
not just mentally perceive our reality, but heartfully receive our reality. Love that you started us off with that, Nalini. And <laughs> um, perceive our reality. And, uh, and it's being, you know, like uh, the visions and dreams that we're having are being massively expanded by Jupiter being with, with um, Mercury. And that will lead us into the middle of April where Neptune and Jupiter conjunct. And this is something they don't, they only can do every like 13 years. So it's been a while since it happened and it hasn't happened in Pisces in like, you know, several, like um, 160 some years or something. I don't even know the last time. So, um, so this is a big deal. Like we have at the Equinox portal, Jupiter and Mercury kind of setting, st setting the stage. Interestingly, Jupiter and the sun were just conjunct. <laughs> Uh, last week. And that was amazing. I had some amazing experiences around that. So I'm really excited to see what happens when Jupiter and Mercury come together and then Jupiter and Neptune come together. And it's not about that we are, that, that they're going to do anything to us, but we are co-creating with them. So when we connect with that and we're tuning into our visions and dreams for what we want, and again, what uh, both Nalini and Sarah said, when we change what is going on within us, we change what is going on around us. They said a little differently, but you know, <laughs> it's it's it comes starts from the inside out, right? So if we if we must do that from the inside of ourselves, and this is a perfect time to really be noticing and taking the time to journal, to meditate, to uh, be out in nature, to whatever it is that helps you feel more connected to the greater cosmos and the earth, both together. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth, who is going to take us home with her amazing wisdom and insights around everything that we've already shared and what she has to add to that. <laughs> I just love these. Thank you so much. They're just really precious. And I think it's, it's really special to be able to give this readout. So I love this theme that's coming up around a lot of different things, balance and alignment and um, I would love to build on what you've said, Kay Kaylin, and point out that there's another cycle that we're part of right now that's causing our electromagnetic field to be even more internal, the 12,000 year cycle. And in about 20 years, it'll be at zero. And so it's on an exponential track inward. <laughs> and this isn't a bad thing, but now that we have all these different other alignments going on, it's mind blowing that all of them are happening at once. And that kind of is what it feels like in everyone's personal lives, I think, is everything's happening at once. Every aspect of our lives has some changing or shifting going on that feels really overwhelming. But this is a massive influx of light as a benefit to all consciousness and especially the earth. So not only will we have those cracks, I bet you that those cracks will be bigger and more intense than we've ever measured before. And that those cracks are gonna let in not only galactic center light, but light from beyond our galaxy, from many other galaxies and from the heart of the universe. We know now for sure that most of the light out in the universe, we don't know where it comes from. It doesn't come from galaxies or stars. Nobody knows where it's from. But deep down inside, we all know, hey, that's just consciousness. Everything is consciousness. It's made of particles of consciousness. And consciousness is very bright. <laughs> it literally is light. So looking forward to all this new energy that probably our galaxy hasn't even experienced before. This is an immense time of not knowing. And so that's really important to embrace, especially for those of us who really revel in and, um, and, uh, and love being librarians of knowledge, not knowing can be extremely powerful. And in that it brings us to the present, like Nalini was saying, you really can't know anything from here on out unless you're gazing in reality in the present. Now, that being said, I think that this is causing a lot of different polarities to pop up for people to heal. 
And the one that seems to be coming up the most has to do with suffering and deprivation and what my friend Lucia Renee teacher calls the persevering victim. And the persevering victim is countered by the creator being, the sovereign being who's in service to the world, but is sovereign and is a creator and keeps choosing from the palette of the emotional body, the frequency body, the palette that we get to pick from. So personally, this has been totally the case where I'm starting to see more clearly and it's being more revealed to me all the hidden ways from my subconscious, from my subtle bodies, from my other lifetimes even, where I've persevered and said, well, I'll just suffer through, I can make it. And not choosing to be in joy, not choosing to say, well, you know what? Okay, this crazy tragedy has just happened to me. And this, you know, this relationship has ended or this really important thing has just fallen apart. And I don't know why. You're not supposed to know why all the time. It's really important to be in the energy because it's revealing to you whatever dense stuff has to come up and whatever trauma needs to come up. So here's a good example that's, that's more relatable. All this stuff going on with war, especially nuclear war, being thrown out in, through the media. Well, this has been fascinating and really important for me personally because I have a whole bunch of memories that are repressed from my childhood when I was growing up in Germany during the Cold War. And so all this talk about Russia, et cetera, is exactly how I grew up. And it has literally done a, done a beautiful thing. It's shown a light for me onto my subconscious and all my hidden memories so that I can heal them. And it, it's actually extremely exciting because this is bottom of the pot stuff. This is really good news. <laughs> Most people would be like, oh my gosh, I don't want my trauma to come up. Well, actually, you do, you need it because the earth at solstice gave us an opportunity to drop all of our baggage. And that's exactly what she's been doing for the first half of this cycle from solstice to solstice. She's revealed all of that through her own embodiment, opening of portals is going on all over the earth and through other people's fields. A lot of the gatekeepers are waking up. A lot of healers are waking up and realizing, oh, it's time to start work. And anything keeping them from that, anything keeping from their, them from their joy, anything keeping us in a state of, oh, I'm just gonna get by. I'm just gonna trudge through this again. That's not the kind of beautiful life that the earth wants to co-create with us. So the other piece that I think is so key is that while the shedding of the baggage and the victimization is going on, there is a revealing of a template, a, an original design template that is in the earth, in her memory, in the water, in the crystals, in the snowflakes, in your body. And this template is very subtle. It's rising up. And when I look at it, it looks like very fine filigree gold light, but it, it's beautifully made and it's available and it's magical. And all you have to do is pay attention. There's nothing special to do. You don't need to plug yourself in. You're already plugged in. It'd be good to ground with the earth and ground with the flowers and the plants and animals and notice how they are also in their wisdom grounding in this template, but it's the template they know well. They've been using it to fly north and south for eons and eons. And it's one that we've forgotten with the distortion of competition, the distortion of the fear of death, the distortion of the fear of our own trauma and even more so the fear of our own power. So for me, deep in my heart, and I feel it really deeply, that it's time for us to be one with that, to be willing to be really human and 
to be really deep in the body. That's what's plugged in. There's nothing special other than that for you to do, is just to notice it. So it's not that there's practices besides doing trauma healing on yourself that need to be put into place, but rather putting your attention fully, first and second attention really fully on what's going on around you and the magic and the light that's available and not resisting it because it's going to naturally reveal to you all the structures that need to go. So it's a beautiful time to get creative with the palette of your emotions and decide each moment, what am I really going to be doing right now in my time? And it's not easy at all because we get caught up in lots of drama and inner trauma, but keep trying, just keep trying, keep grounding, keep noticing, be aware, be willing, don't resist it. And do we know exactly what's going to happen with all these qualities of light? No. And that's the awesome part because humans don't know everything. <laughs> <Thank goodness>. So <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> And so it's, it's the, hey, I'm, I'm going to take my place in equanimity in this design template. I'm not in charge of it. Humans never were. In fact, I'm merely just a small part of it. So being able to feel that equanimity, it's actually a relief because then, no, you're not in charge. <laughs> and it's okay. It's okay to allow yourself to be in humble service to the land, to the plants, to the animals, the people around you. I've purchased a mountain here in Ecuador. It's a sacred mountain. It's got all kinds of things going on, both light and dark. But what I find is that I don't call myself the owner of this property. I cannot do that. And it's the other way around. I'm in service to her. And she has taught me a lot and brought me into humility and into grace that I really did not know about. And so I've learned more about humility and grace from a 16 acre mountain than I have from any human. <laughs> and that's the kind of thing that's available for all of us now. So I'm excited for the cycles and the light and the alignment and all of these pieces that we get to examine. That's the crystalline, the fluid, the particles of consciousness all kicking in, but more so taking our rightful place in equanimity rather than in power over. And that goes for our minds too. So if you have trauma that has power over you, that's going to be put in its place too. Thank goodness. Thank you, Elizabeth so much yeah. thank you all of you this has been so lovely it's so much fun to do this i highly recommend it <laughs> thank you Elizabeth. yes more to come we're so excited and i hope everybody feels inspired i'm i'm inspired so i'm imagining anybody who's listening to this is going to be inspired by what has been shared here by everyone so yay <laughs> good